welcome. The sun is getting sufficiently active that it's worth doing a daily review of what's been going on on the sun and what's to come. And so I'm starting the same series as I started 10 years ago called The Sun Today. And so we're starting on the 8th of July, 2021. Well, let's first take a look at the status and trends on the sun. And I, overall, I would say the 8th of July was quiet. The sunspot number was 16. And as you can see, it's been declining for the last few days. Whether that decline will continue, we'll just have to wait and see. It has been 64 days since we last had a spotless day. That's the longest run in nearly four years. There were no significant flares on the 8th of July. There were a few B flares towards the end of the period which might imply more activity to come. There were no significant CMEs during that period as well. And also there were no geomagnetic storms. So overall, a fairly quiet and passive sun. Let's first take a look at the evolution of the sunspots over this period. Uh, we have the remnants of region 2839 that's circled here. It's just to the west of Sun Center at the moment. There's a new region emerging on the southeast limb, and we have several old plage regions. These are these bright areas here. These are important from the point of view that they are brighter and last longer than sunspots. So even though during solar maximum, there are a lot of sunspots on the sun, so you imagine the sun would be darker and emitting less energy, there's much more plage around to more than compensate for that. So that's why the total solar irradiance at solar maximum is higher than it is at solar minimum. We're going to show you a 24 hour movie from the SDO HMI Continuum channel. Next, we'll take a look at the magnetic field on the sun using the Zeeman effect as measured by the solar dynamics HMI instrument. Look at these bipolar regions. These are mixtures of positive and negative field close to one another. Positive field is indicated by white and is field directed towards us. Negative field is black and indicating magnetic field directed away from us. So see whether these look stable or they're growing or they're fading away. Most of them will just fade away and do nothing much. But the few that remain stable or start to grow have the potential to becoming the next major sunspot region, which is why they're important. Next, we'll take a look at the so-called transition region. The surface of the sun is at about 5,700 degrees Kelvin, but the corona of the sun is at about two, three million degrees Kelvin. So there has to be a region where the temperature transitions from the cool photosphere to the hot corona. That's called the transition region. And you can see this region in the AIA instruments helium two channel at 304 angstroms, and this is an image of it. The things to look for here are these bright areas above the limb of the sun. Uh, these are called prominences and have a tendency to erupt. When prominences transition onto the disk, they become dark features called filaments. They're the same thing, but they've just got a different name. Look at the dark and the, these light features and see whether they're becoming dynamic or growing, which is a sign that they're about to erupt. Next, we're gonna go a little bit higher in the solar atmosphere to the lower corona. That's about 600,000 degrees Kelvin. To look at that, we're going to use the AIA instrument again, but this time using the Iron 9 channel at 171 angstroms. One of the things to note here is how dynamic the so-called quiet corona is. You'll see there's a lot of motion just about anywhere you look on the sun. You can also see the interconnection between the various bipolar regions because the plasma outlines the magnetic fields. Lastly, there looks to be a lot of activity on the northeast limb. So there's perhaps a new region coming over that area in the next day or two. Next, 
Next, we'll take a look at coronal holes. They are low temperature and low density features, so they appear dark by contrast with the rest of the corona. We best see these in the SDO AIA channel Iron 12 at 1.2 million degrees Kelvin. Coronal holes are areas of open magnetic fields, so the solar wind can escape unhindered through there. So when one of those is pointed at the Earth, we get high speed coronal wind hitting us and can get geomagnetic storms as a result. There are two polar coronal holes that are basically permanent. They, are, they just disappear for a short period at solar maximum. But every now and then there are coronal holes that intrude towards the equator. And we have one such in the southeast part of the sun at the moment. And that's going to rotate and become geo-effective in the next few days. So we would expect a somewhat of an increase in solar wind speed. Next, we're going to look at solar active regions. These are the bright, hot coronal areas above sunspot regions. To best see those, we look at the SDO AIA Instruments Iron 16 channel at 335 angstroms. And as you can see in the picture opposite, there are many bright areas across the disk. These are at about two and a half million degrees Kelvin. And that would indicate that there are areas above sunspots or, uh, or these strong magnetic bipoles and therefore a potential area for flares. Next, we'll take a look at some flares. There we have to go to a yet a higher temperature channel, which in AIA is the Iron 18 channel at 94 angstroms. That has a peak temperature of about 6 million degrees Kelvin. We only got a few B flares on the 8th, so it will appear as the, just as brief flashes. You won't see any major flares. Now we're going to take a look at coronal mass ejections. For that, we have to go to a different spacecraft and a different instrument. That's the Soho Lasco C2 instrument. You can see a frame from it over here on the right. There were no major CMEs launched during the 8th of July, uh, although we do catch just the end of one launched the day before at the beginning of the video. As you might expect from the previous data, the solar wind has been relatively quiet too. There have been no extreme changes in the vertical component of the magnetic field at the Earth. The solar wind is at a relatively low density and a relatively low speed, less than 400 kilometers per second. And the temperature is varied between 10,000 and 100,000 degrees Kelvin, which is also relatively low. As a result, the auroral forecast is also quiet. As you can see, there's an auroral oval at high latitudes but it's not going to produce very strong aurora. So let's draw some overall conclusions here. Solar activity was low on the 8th of July. We could risk having a spot to stay soon if these new regions don't uh, produce very many sunspots or diffuse away quickly. And we have uh, the very low potential for major flares. Well, the sun has this very annoying habit of embarrassing you when you've drawn some conclusions. I just finished saying that there was no chance of any major activity when I looked at the GOES plot and saw that we just had two C flares, two fairly large C flares. I managed to find out that they were from a region on the northwest limb, which is setting, so we're probably not going to get very much more activity from them. However, it's always an indication how quickly a region can come up and start producing major activity, so one has to be a little bit careful. We were not unlikely to get an M flare from this, I think, because the region is now behind the limb and most of the flare will be eclipsed by the limb. So we're gonna to have to wait a couple of weeks for this region to come back to see how it developed. So until next time, stay safe and goodbye.